Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I have one of the all-time classic best chapters from Anthony Norvell. This is called Utilizing the Law of Demonstration, and he goes deep on your ability and power within your mind to demonstrate anything that you want in your life. How do you create your reality? Using these universal laws, the law of demonstration. This comes from Norvell's book, Dynamic Mental Laws for Successful Living. Anthony Norvell was a fantastic post-New Thought teacher that taught about the law of attraction, mostly in Carnegie Hall through regular sessions back in the 60s. And he wrote about his experiences in coaching these people. He was quite famous in celebrity circles. He met and helped coach a bunch of very famous actors like Lucille Ball and Fred Astaire. A lot of them were helped out at certain parts of their career and he became famous for this and started teaching these classes in Carnegie Hall. And they are all the classic teaching of the law of attraction. A lot of times what we hear today is derived from those original teachings back then and he was really the source of a lot of this classic material very similar yet quite different than Neville Goddard or Joseph Murphy he has his own unique inspirational style utilizing the law of demonstration you have the power within your mind to demonstrate anything that you want in life to demonstrate means to bring something from the invisible to the visible realm God has given a mysterious power to all his creation to achieve completion and fulfillment of destiny. This is as true of the plant and animal kingdoms as it is of the human kingdom. However, demonstration works under definite universal laws. This is a world of law and order, everything from the constellations in the heavens to the tiniest invisible atom operates under this universal law gravity the power behind the throne gravity or the law of attraction is the true power behind the material and physical throne of life just as gravity holds the planets in empty space and causes them to revolve around each other without collisions so too there is a gravity pull exerted between people and objects when you learn how to use this law of gravity you can attract into your orbit of experience the persons, jobs, material objects, money, and things that you desire. However, as the universe operates under law and order, so too you must obey the invisible laws that are back of time and space. If you violate these laws or unbalance them, you suffer the consequences in poverty, sickness, failure, and defeat. What are the laws of demonstration? There are many laws of demonstration, but in this lesson we are concerned with only seven of the most important ones. Elsewhere, in this course, we have covered other mental, physical, and spiritual laws. The following seven laws concern the method by which you can demonstrate or bring into existence in your life the money, land, cars, jewelry, furs, friends, love happiness, and other things that you consider of value and which you desire. The seven laws of demonstration. One, the law of attraction. Two, the law of harvest. Three, the law of usage. Four, the law of reciprocity. Five, the law of transmutation. Six, the law of involution. Seven, the law of evolution. Let us take each of these laws in turn and study them thoroughly. 1. The Law of Attraction The Law of Attraction is defined in physics as the mutual action by which bodies tend to cohere. It also moans the power of attracting. Cohere relates to the cohesive action that exists among all of nature's elements, made up of atoms and molecules. Everything you see is a mass of vibrating atoms constantly in motion. Things are held together by this law of attraction or cohesion. The thing that makes them cohere 
or stick together and appear as a solid mass is the power of gravity or magnetism. Your body has the power of attraction within itself and exercises it constantly in its attraction to certain people. Lovers know this power well and find that they are irresistibly drawn to each other physically in an ardent embrace. Your body feels the magnetic pull of sexual attraction physically, and this leads to marriage and the perpetuation of the human race. There is the same law of attraction within your mind, being electrical and magnetic in its proper sense. Your mind has the power to reach out in time and space and motivate other people and attract matter or objects to yourself. See how the miser uses this law of attraction. He concentrates so much on money that he magnetizes his brain to attract nothing but money. He often dies of starvation. It is true because he is unbalanced in his love and worship of money. But despite his negative use of this law, he does attract money. If you wish to use the magnet of your mind to magnetize money, you may do so, but try to use the law of balance. Also, otherwise, you will become warped and your money will do you no good back of every great fortune is someone's mind working this law of attraction. This is true of the Rockefellers, the Fords, the Morgans, the Carnegies, the Gettys, the Astors, the Vanderbilts, Onassis, or any other multimillionaire who has ever built a fortune. How to concentrate on success. It is not necessary that you concentrate the magnetic power of your mind on money as such. You can concentrate on success with such emotional intensity that you will inevitably be led to the making of a big fortune. However, do not want money just for yourself, but for the good you can do with it. Carnegie gave away over $500 million in his lifetime. He established 1,200 public libraries. When he died, he still had many millions left in the Carnegie Foundation, and Carnegie Hall was established from his funds. Carnegie said, someday it will be considered a sin for any man to die rich. He believed that big fortunes should be used for the good of the world and return to the people. This follows our law of reciprocity, the fourth law we shall deal with in this section of our study. How to magnetize money. You can magnetize money by desiring it for some useful purpose. Each day, sit down for a few moments and concentrate all the power of your mind and attention on how you can increase your income. Do this consciously. Review in your mind the steps you might take to make more money. Visualize yourself receiving large sums of money from unexpected sources. You may not see the connection between concentrating on money and actually attracting it to you, but there is some mysterious power of the mind which has the ability to reach out in time and space and trigger action which brings money to you. This money may come to you through a relative who would put you in his will. It may come through something you have done in the past which suddenly becomes valuable, like a piece of land where a new development suddenly takes place and makes the land worthy many times what you paid for it. Or it may come to you through an idea that you get for inventing some object or developing some new business method that makes you rich. How the Mind Magnetizes Money Back in the Depression years, a painter got the idea of repainting old cars for a reasonable sum, something like $29.50. Business zoomed, and in a few years' time, this man made a fortune. His income from this business on a national scale is now something like $15 million a year. Recently, his company was put on the New York Stock Exchange. One idea can magnetize riches for you. No army can withstand the strength of an idea whose time has come. William James said, an idea to be suggestive must come to the individual with the force of a revelation. You must desire money. And that idea must so permeate the structure of your brain that it forms a magnetic attraction between you and success. A one woman magnetized $250,000 one young woman who came to my Carnegie Hall course of lessons on demonstrating money and supply had a real need for more money. She had a growing daughter who needed an education, and her husband had deserted them for another woman. 
After taking the course, this lady told me there was seemingly no way by which she could ever magnetize a fortune. I asked her if she had any living relatives. She said she had a father and a brother. She had not seen her father for nearly 15 years, as he had highly disproved of her marriage, and they were estranged. He had been ill of late, she told me. I urged her to write a letter to her father showing concern for his well-being and to forgive him for what he had done in the past. This year led to her father taking a visit to New York to visit his daughter. She treated him with love and care as he was an invalid recovering from a recent illness. A year later, her father died and he had changed his will leaving her $250,000 cash. In a former will, he was leaving it all to his son but her kindly act had so touched the dying man's heart that he made provision for his daughter. There is magnetism to love and kindness and forgiveness. Sometimes it can be counted in actual dollars and cents. A negative instance of this same sort was that of a young man who had an uncle in Texas worth many millions. This young man was too busy to ever write a letter or visit this rich uncle. When the man died, he left the nephew only $500 cash and left the bulk of his fortune to relatives who had been kind to him in his later years and to charity. Remember, there are two poles of gravity, the negative and the positive. If you constantly exercise only the negative polarity of fear, hatred, envy, jealousy, worry, and selfishness, you will keep good fortune from you. Why fear and hatred work disaster? Fear and hatred can work disaster for a person for just as the positive emotions have power to attract good things to one, so negative thoughts and emotions can bring disaster. The Bible tells of how fear attracts that which we fear. Job laments, For that which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Fear and hatred can magnetize on the negative side, just as love and happiness, confidence and faith can magnetize on the positive side. Example, a young man and his wife were living in Hollywood, California. They expected a baby in a few months. They feared the heavy street traffic in the city might endanger their coming child when he was old enough to be out. They moved to a high hill overlooking the city, built a house with a high steel fence around it, and when the child was born, they felt safe and secure. When the child was at the crawling stage, the husband went out one morning to get his car out of the garage and the child crawled onto the driveway. The father ran over his own child, killing him instantly. The thing which they feared sought them out, even on a hilltop, where there seemed to be perfect security. 2. The Law of the Harvest The law of the harvest is also given in the Bible, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. The seed you plant mentally will yield the same type of crops. You never get cabbage from rose seed, nor oak trees from corn. The law of the harvest states that everything produces according to its kind. God created the universe under universal laws which work mathematically. There are cycles in nature which determine that tides which come in must also go out, that summer will follow spring, and that fall with its harvest shall precede the barrenness of winter. So too there are cycles and tides in the affairs of men, which work unerringly to bring back that which goes out from the mind. Shakespeare told of these tides in these words, What seed have you planted? What kind of seed have you planted in your garden of destiny? The ideas that you put into your mind are the mental seed that take root and sprout and grow in your life. Emerson said, Ideas must work through the brains and the arms of the good and brave men, or they have no better than dreams. Your ideas can be high and noble, or lowly and ignoble. The results in your life will follow suit and be of a like kind. If you imitate the examples of good and generous men, you will eventually begin to attract a similar destiny to the ones they have had. Study the lives of great men of history and strive to emulate their highest and best thoughts. Soon your actions will be patterned after them, and you cannot help but achieve the greatest and best in your destiny. It is impossible to imitate Voltaire without being Voltaire, someone has truthfully said. 
3. The Law of Usage An arm or leg that is not used soon atrophies and loses the functional purpose for which it was created. If your brain cells are not exercised and used daily, they soon atrophy and are incapable of being used constructively. Then the brain resembles a garden where there are some flowers but also many weed patches. The weed patches make the garden unsightly and untidy. Are you using your brain to full capacity? Scientists say that even a great genius like Einstein used only about 10% of his full brain potential. Imagine if you used your full brain potential, what great things you could accomplish. Even if you add only 10% more mental action to your total mental power, after completing this course, you should be able to soar to the loftiest heights of your full potential in the future. Your creative mind is godlike. When you rise to your full spiritual stature, your creative mind can actually be godlike. In fact, in the Bible, in the first chapter of Genesis, verses 26 through 28, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You are a spiritual idea. This means that you are literally a spiritual idea with the same creative power that God himself possesses. You can create in your own image and likeness physically and mentally. You can certainly build the world you choose. Jonathan Edwards goes so far as to say, the material universe exists only in the mind. What kind of world are you creating in your mind? As you use the creative power of your higher mind, you will form the world of your choice, and this will externalize in your actions, words, and deeds. Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, and the great Christian mystic Jesus all taught the same idea that man could shape the world he desired in his mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, is a spiritual truth. Use your higher mind, then, to form the world of beauty that you wish to live in. Use your higher creative mind to imprint health upon your body cells. Call upon this higher mind of God to bring you riches and success in your work. In your imagination, see yourself living a life of peace, health, happiness, beauty, and goodness. The Bible speaks of making man in God's image. The only place where you can hold an image is in the imagination. We've studied elsewhere in this course about this powerful image builder. You can shape the world. You choose and it will externalize under the laws of action and reaction. Pascal said, imagination disposes of everything. It creates beauty, justice, and happiness which is everything in this world. Use the powers of your mind every day. Exercise the memory, the imagination, the ability to concentrate and visualize. The creative power of the mind, the attributes of the subconscious and the intuitive functions of the superconscious mind. All these various attributes of mind are given throughout this entire course and sometimes repeated under various subject headings for greater emphasis. 4. The Law of Reciprocity This law is at work constantly in nature, equalizing and balancing all forces. It is the give and take in the soil, which takes the seed but gives back a crop, generally ten or a hundredfold more than the original seed. Plant a kernel of wheat and you reap a pint. Plant a pint and you reap a bushel. Always the law works to give you back more than you give. This same law of reciprocity works in your own mind and in your relationship to the world. If you give service or labor 
the world gives you money or something else of value. If you give a smile, people trust and befriend you. If you open your heart generously and give of whatever gifts you have, nature rewards you with recognition, fame, fortune, peace, health, and happiness. You give but little when you give of your possessions. Gibran said in the prophet, it is when you give of yourself that you truly give. And the Bible speaks of this law of reciprocity in these words, it is more blessed to give than receive. What are you giving to life? Reciprocity means literally a mutual exchange of goods, thoughts, actions, or other things of value. What are you giving to life? If you give joy and beauty, goodness and truth, love and happiness, service and labor, you can almost certainly expect to receive under the law of the harvest, which we have just studied, something of commensurate value. You may complain, but I've given all these things to people and I get nothing back but ingratitude and disrespect and enmity. This does not mean the law of reciprocity has failed to work. It means merely that you did not get your good back from the source you expected. But how many wonderful things have come to you from other sources in life? How has God blessed your life? You may have been looking for your good from limited human channels, but stop for a moment and think how lucky you are. You have eyes that you can see the beauty of God's world. You have good hearing so you can listen to birdsong, the laughter of children, the music of great artists on radio and television and recordings. You have a sane mind that can enjoy the wonder of books and the art treasures of all ages. You possess an immortal soul that may know and love God and foresee the immortality promised God's loving children. Indeed, when you stop to count your blessings, do they not far outnumber the misfortunes of life? So maybe the good you have done for your children, your relatives, your friends, which does not seem to be repaid by them, is coming back to you through a hundred other channels which you were not aware of until now. 5. The Law of Transmutation Transmutation means the act of changing something from one form to another. Nature is a last master in the art of transmutation. She changes black soil, sunshine, and air and water into the pink flesh of a watermelon and black seed and green rind. She creates a masterpiece of a yellow rose from the same elements. In addition, she gives it a sweet scent that delights the senses. The same law of transmutation works in your own mind. You have it within your power to wave the magic wand of faith and create miracles you desire in your own life. Perhaps one of the greatest wonders of childhood is this amazing power of belief in magic and miracles in a universal Santa Claus which can bring it the greatest treasures of earth. Perhaps this is why the Master Jesus said, Except ye have the faith of a little child, ye shall in no ways enter the kingdom of heaven. The Magic Scepter of Belief Each person possesses the magic scepter of belief within his mind. Here it is that he can literally command the forces of life to obey his dictates and bring him the things he desires. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. The law of transmutation uses this divine act of faith to work its miracles. Have faith in God and faith in yourself as a child of God to be able to work the miracles of transformation and you can literally work miracles. Again, Jesus said of belief, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Amazing miracle through faith. One of the most amazing miracles of modern times occurred through the simple act of faith and prayer. Captain Eddie Rickenbacker and his crew came down in the Pacific on one of their bombing missions. They floated in a rubber life raft for three or four days without food or water. They all prayed to be saved. On the third day, a storm broke and they were saved by the rainwater. On the fourth day, 
when the pangs of hunger were getting unbearable, the prayer for food. Suddenly, a thousand miles from land, a seagull mysteriously appeared and landed on Rickenbacker's head. He caught it, and they ate it. For eleven days, these men drifted, each day bringing them enough sustenance to keep them alive, until they were sighted, and Rickenbacker called it a miracle. He never lost faith throughout that ordeal that they would be saved. Do you have faith enough? Do you have faith enough in your talents, in your ability to make more money, in your power to attract the best life has to offer? If you do not, implement this faith and begin to use the law of transmutation to change the negative conditions in your life into positive ones. Instead of seeing your present job as a prison, which you hate, transmute it with your power of mind and see it as a stepping stone to something better. Your present job will be more tolerable if you begin to see ways in which you can improve your services and enjoy the work as much as possible until you can get some other job. Instead of seeing your marriage as one of failure and disappointment, transmute it through the power of your mind into one of love and patience, kindness and consideration. Let it be a discipline in which you will gain a valuable lesson in human relationships that will make it more bearable and happy. How thoughts can work magic. Instead of looking at your present room, apartment, or house as a bleak, drab, or ugly environment, see what you can do to transform it. A can of paint, curtains at the windows, clean floors and windows can work magic in a place. As you prove yourself capable of keeping your present home bright and clean, you will find yourself gradually being led into the more spacious, luxurious type of home you dream of. Instead of accepting the limitations of your present income or financial situation in life, transmute it and see yourself earning more money, study and work evenings, if need be, to prepare yourself for the bigger income. Hold the picture in your mind that you will come into a bigger fortune in the future. You will externalize that which you hold most frequently in your mind, the law. 6. The Law of Involution The word involution means literally to involve or take into itself. The process by which nature evolves all forms of creation is through this act of involving into itself first the seed or germ of its future growth. We see the law of involution at work in the creation of an egg. The sperm or seed is first planted within the chicken, and then after a period of gestation, the egg is formed with the growing life of the future chick involved within it. Science never has been able to explain that which came first, the chicken or the egg. That is God's mystery. However, we do know that whatever is involved that is put into the mind will eventually have to externalize or evolve itself into some form or other. What are you involving in mind? Are you involving in your mind thoughts of health and happiness? Or do you dwell on thoughts of sickness, accident, age, and misery? Do you involve in your mind thoughts of peace and order, or are you suffering from confusion, disorder, and chaos? Do you involve thoughts of beauty, goodness, truth, and love in your mind? If you do, these qualities must externalize in your environment. If you spend time putting thoughts of success and money into your mind, they must eventually externalize in your getting rich. Example. A great pianist like Van Cliburn, who has won some of the world's greatest honors in his concert appearances, spent eight to ten hours a day for at least ten or more years, practicing and perfecting his art of playing the piano. During those years, he was using the law of involution. He involved into his consciousness the idea of perfection, harmony, beauty, rhythm, knowledge, excellence, idealism, high standards, and value. With such a mental involvement and with natural a talent, he couldn't possibly evolve anything else but a great career. Edison said of genius, it is one-tenth inspiration and nine-tenths perspiration. Hard work, useful knowledge, concentrated effort, a desire to evolve and perfect a talent. These are the great qualities that most geniuses involve in their consciousness before they produce magnificent masterpieces. 
perfection is no trifle. A friend visited the great sculptor Michelangelo in his studio where he was working on the magnificent statue of David. Three weeks later, the friend visited the studio once again and saw that Michelangelo was still polishing the same section of the statue he had been working on before. He said, but Michelangelo, you were working on that same place three weeks ago. Why do you waste time on such trifles? The great master replied, trifles make perfection and perfection is no trifle. 7. The Law of Evolution Evolution means an unfolding process of development or growth. When you involve something in your mind, it must evolve or externalize itself and develop according to the initial seed or germ which has been planted. This is the law of evolution. We see this law at work everywhere in the universe. This law of evolution also works in your mind. That is why it is so vitally important not to allow all kinds of negative thoughts to be planted carelessly in your mind. The effect of negative thoughts. What is the effect of negative thinking? Each time you think a thought, good or bad, it makes an inroad in the gray matter of your brain. It involves itself electrically in your brain. Your consciousness, which is the sum total of those individual thoughts you think, becomes predominantly negative or positive, depending on the nature of your thoughts. If you think constantly such thoughts as the following, I am sick, I am old, I am a failure, I am miserable, I hate everyone and everyone hates me, life isn't worth living, I'm afraid I'll lose my job, I'll be poor in my life, I'm ugly and I'm unloved, I cannot make a fortune. You will be involving such negative forces that they cannot ever evolve in a dynamic positive action. How to involve positive thoughts. If you want positive things to happen to you, you must involve only positive thoughts in your mind. They will then evolve in situations and conditions that are good. When you arise in the morning and prepare for your day's activities, run a series of positive thoughts through your mind. Example, today will be a wonderful day. I shall meet people I like and who will like me. I shall see many new opportunities to advance my interests. Money will come to me from unexpected sources. I am healthy and happy. I now put my thoughts in order and refuse to be disturbed by external conditions. My work will be easier and more pleasant because I am evolving through my job to something better. I see only that which is beautiful and good. I refuse to be involved in quarreling, confusion, and discord. I refuse to gossip and demean myself by uttering negative words or using obscene language. I control my temper and my tongue. I now accept the fact that I am created in the image and likeness of God, and I will act in a dignified, gracious, and loving manner all day today. If you do this every day of your life, you will be involving only the best thoughts, and you cannot help but evolve the type of destiny which reflects prosperity, friendship, love, abundance, health, and happiness. Summary of the Law of Demonstration The law of demonstration for bringing that which is invisible into the realm of the visible. The seven laws which may be used for demonstrating what you want in life. The magnetic idea back of most big fortunes. The golden law of the harvest for increasing supply. The laws of reciprocity and transmutation for increasing good and changing conditions you do not want in life. The regimen for establishing positive thoughts. And this concludes utilizing the law of demonstration. I had so much fun reading this. This is so core, so perfect, so wonderful. This captures the true essence of this teaching. If I was just to pick one chapter that outlines all the stuff that we've taught so far, this would be a pretty good one to go with. It covers all the major universal laws that deal specifically with demonstration, which is really the creation of realities. Those laws, once again, are the law of attraction, the law of the harvest, the law of usage, the law of reciprocity, the law of transmutation, the law of involution, and the law of evolution. All of these together perfectly summarize these ancient 
and classic beliefs that are written about in the Bible that we experience in our lives every single day, whatsoever you think in your heart will happen in the world. If we understand the full range of universal laws and the way they play their role in the creation of realities, it is quite simple. We see examples of it in nature. When you plant the seed and the flower grows, when the baby is born or when the egg is gestated from a chicken, we see it in every species, in every animal, all around us. We see these laws at work in different ways at different levels. And our mind is working with these laws. We are planting seeds and these ideas are gestating and evolving. So something simple can get more and more complicated and expand and grow. One idea, one thought, it grows. All of it works together. If you don't use it, it goes away. Whatever you give, you get back. You transmute, you involute, and you evolve. All of it works together. If you want to know the secret to creating a reality, simply listen to this episode over and over again. And I will create a morning meditation from that beautiful affirmation that was given at the end. So please tell me, are you using the seven laws of demonstration? Are you demonstrating the reality that you want in your life? And if not, why not? Let me see if we can help you. Go to the comments. If somebody is struggling with using these laws, because that is normal, then give them advice. Give them your own opinion. All together, we are a group mind and together we can help each other evolve and grow and demonstrate a reality of peace and perfection. Welcome to the Reality Revolution.